Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. This one's absolutely insane. I'm going to compare myself to Max Verstappen, the current F1 world champion in qualifying trim on the same track, in the same car, in the same conditions. And that's because it was the Le Mans 24 hour virtual qualifying session that happened a couple of weeks ago. Pretty insane, I can even compare myself in the way I'm about to show you. But first, let me give you a bit of context at Le Mans. This was my quickest lap in the session. It was a 10 minute session, you only got two laps. And the first one for me went really badly wrong. I got blocked in the final sector. So provisionally going into this final lap, I was 23rd on the grid. So I had to deliver a decent lap. So turn two, first gear, use the kerb on the inside up to second for the next or turn three, the right hander, use all the kerb on the exit. And I'm cutting the traction control on the exits as well. Not that you can see that, but it does help give you a bit of a better exit. Next left hander, third gear, avoid the curb on the inside, flat for the right, and then Tetra Rouge coming up. In quality trim, it's slight lift, a really, really minor lift, and then you get back on the throttle straight away, TC0. So LMP2, it's quick. We already know LMP2s are quick anyway, but because it's R-Factor and you can drive like an absolute maniac, uh, the, the times are pretty much almost LMP1 hypercar times. So yeah, it feels pretty insane going into the first chicane you're looking for the 100 meter board slam on the brakes in a straight line down to third gear for the right second for the left use the curb on the inside it kind of helps grip and rotate the car around which is quite nice you can see i got a bit of traffic on the lap itself but not that it impeded me in any way shape or form i tried to get a tow but i, I didn't manage to get one to be honest and the tow in these cars is very minor you can't really gain too much from that Approaching the second chicane then, looking for the 100 meter board, but you're breaking about 80 meters, so later than the first chicane, down to third for the left, use the curb on the inside, flick it into the right-hander, second on the apex, and then avoid the curb on the exit. So, so far, sector one was really good. Sector two, for me, it felt really good. And then sector three, to be honest, was the holy grail of the, of the lap. I completely hooked it up, maybe had a 10th in it, but sector three at Le Mans is very technical and going into this or Molsan corner we break super late I thought I'd outbroke myself but I just thought you know what I'm going to slam on the brake go down the gears as quick as possible and just hope I stop in time I managed to do so next up is Indy the most dangerous corner on the lap and the car in front of me you see there that's Bono Huiz in the Mercedes car so Bono one if not the quickest one of the quickest on our factor two I knew it was a decent lap I was on because I, I had my delta but I wasn't really losing out to Bono so I knew I was on a, a fairly decent lap. Indy we nailed the next left hander I might have turned in a bit early there but we did avoid the curb and we got the power really early. First gear for the right hander the 90 left I hate that corner you never feel like you've fully nailed it um, but TC0 on the exit once again and then next up coming up is the Porsche curves which is a very intense section of corners and you use on you'll see on the entry you use all that astroturf on the left hand side and just kind of feather the car in be very smooth with the steering and a blend off the throttle then this next bit is all flat this next left hand is flat in fifth gear down to fourth off the throttle momentarily but then back on the throttle this next left left hander is flat but to be honest because i saw my delta i did lift slightly because i didn't want to uh, get a track invalidation on the exit Approaching the final chicanes then, down to third for the left, use all the kerb pretty much everywhere, second gear and then leave it in second for the final section. Absolutely abusing the kerbs, TC0 on the exit. I knew it was a good lap. I screamed across the line uh, because I was provisionally third until Max Verstappen went across the line and he was second. So this is Max Verstappen in the red car, the team red line car, I'm in the white car. Let's compare the laps and see where he gained, I gained and vice versa. So sector one. You can see on the exit there of turn three, he got a massive slide on. So clearly using TC0 on the exits, I'd imagine, because that wouldn't happen if he had the TC on. And this next next left-hander, I turn in a bit later and I get a better exit. And so sector one, then I am up by half a tenth. But Tetra Rouge, he gets a very good exit and uh, gains that all back and maybe a little bit more. So he probably gained, I'd say a tenth in Tetra Rouge alone. And there is a difference in the setups, definitely. Um, you can see there with the gearing, we're running slightly different gearing to them, meaning on the straights we are a little bit quicker. Um, so we've gained that half a tenth back on him. But in the chicanes, you, he uses a lot more track on the entry and gets an absolutely insane exit. 
he probably gained a tenth, tenth and a half on that one chicane alone. And, uh, you know, I did try that in practice. I tried using that extra runoff for the entry, but I just couldn't get it to work. Um, and I, you know, from my point of view, I nailed Sector 2 as much as I could. And you can see that again in the chicane, another tenth in his direction gained. And that's two tenths now down going into the second half of the lap. So obviously at the time, I, I didn't know that because I can't see his car when I'm doing my qualifying lap. But when you look back at it, it's like, wow. That is a lot of time gained. So Sector 2, he uh, destroyed me. Whether that's driving, setup, or both, I don't know. And uh, you have to be careful with this kind of comparison because there is a, an element of concertina effect. The car behind will look like he's gaining on the entries and the car ahead will look like they're gaining on the exits. But it is you can compare quite well the differences. So Indy... You can see here we do gain, I'd say, a, a bit on the entry. Not as much as maybe we see there, but we do gain a bit. He gains a bit on the exit, but it's not a very long straight after. So overall, I think we do gain a bit there. On the exit of this next 90, 90 right-hander, he gained a fraction. I was a bit hot on the entry, um, and obviously I used a different line as well. But whether that gained me anything or not, I don't think so. I just preferred it. Into the Porsche curves. He clips the curve on the inside of the first right, and I think that kind of compromises him in the rest of it you can see we're slightly gaining until or well, we're gaining through this right hander but on the next left where i lifted and it is flat you can see on the exit he gains a little bit back which is slightly annoying i should have been a bit more committed but in the heat of the moment i really didn't want to invalidate my lap and then in the final chicanes our line is just a bit more tidy through here and we we use a bit more curve on the final bit we do gain in the final chicanes but over the line you'll see He's just a 31 or a 21-222. We set a 21-4. We're pretty much even. I think it was half a tenth quicker in the final sector. And we gained a bit in the first sector and he destroyed me in the second sector. But if we look in slow-mo a bit into details of the laps, sector one, turn three on the exit, he had that massive slide, that massive oversteer moment, which it did cost him fractionally going down this downhill section, maybe half a tenth. But interesting that he was pushing that hard and into the chicanes then so he gains a lot more in the entry just because of the track usage he can take a lot more speed with that um less acute angle same kind of line through the middle of the corner but then his car just grips whereas mine kind of understeers or washes out a bit wide allowing him to get on the power earlier and when you get a decent exit with that long straight after you're going to gain a fair amount so he did gain a tenth in every single chicane resulting in a two-temp deficit to me in uh, in Sector 2 alone. But Mulsanne Corner, I forgot to say it in the actual comparison, but I gained a fair amount under braking. As I said, it's hard to compare fully because there is a bit of a concertina effect, but I'm convinced I, I gained a decent chunk, maybe half a tenth, maybe slightly more overall in, in Mulsanne Corner because I braked. As I said, I thought I'd outbroke myself, but I did gain quite a lot in the braking. He gained a bit back on the exit, granted um and he he did gain overall half a tenth in sector three so i think a lot of that was in that final porsche curve where i lifted so if we look at indy then the most dangerous corner on the track both using a lot of curb on the the entry to indy once again i'm probably fractionally later on the brakes and his line is is nicer actually he turns in later squares off the corner a bit more i turn in a bit early get the nose in but I'm kind of sat there on the apex thinking, mm, when can I get on the power? Um, but I, I did manage to kind of move the car around the kerb quite well and get on the power fairly early, but his line was a bit nicer. Um, but this, my line here, I was the only driver that took this line into this 90 right. Very strange, and I kind of used the kerb here on the left um, just to get a bit more of a less acute angle for the right-hander. Um, but you can see there, my car washes out mid-corner. It gets a little bit of understeer, whereas his doesn't, and he can get on the power a bit earlier. Um, interesting. I mean, the setups undoubtedly will be different, but I'd love to know what the differences are. Obviously, I don't know the differences, but... So that, yeah, as I said earlier, he clipped the inside of the Porsche curve on the right-hand side, and it cost him throughout this whole section up until... So through this corner as well, it cost him a little bit, but this next 90 left, I should have pin the throttle and trust that the car would grip I didn't you can see now he's gaining a bit of time back on me so um, I think the difference in gearing also meant I was a little bit quicker in the Porsche curves as well 
Um, it just allowed me to have a bit of a higher RPM average compared to Max through that section of corners. Um, so yeah, I think they were running longer gears than us, but I'm convinced ours were better. So I'm surprised they didn't run them. Anyway, into the final section of corners, you can see there, this is the penultimate corner. I take a lot more curve on the inside. I think he got a bit of a tank slapper through the first chicane and that cost him throughout the rest of the section. So we did gain a little bit back there in, in the final section of, uh, of the lap at Le Mans, but overall I couldn't bring back the deficit I lost in the, far, in the two chicanes on the Molsan. Just too much, you know, almost a quarter of a second, which at this level of racing is a lot. And you can see there we were fourth on the grid. So it was a good lap. I was very, very happy with it. You, on the right hand side you can see the times there they're incremental gaps so we were about a quarter of a second off pole but you can see where we lost it Verstappen didn't get pole he lost that by two thousandths I think that graphic there is wrong um, but what a phenomenon you know F1 world champ he doesn't have to come and do this stuff you know he, he's the reigning Formula 1 world champion but he can come in and be quicker than his sim racing teammates at Team Redline some of the best sim racers in the world Unbelievable and fair play. Um, it was a, it was a real honour to be racing him in the first stint and qualifying against him as well. Love it. I can do this kind of comparison and it, it's really interesting. I think you know their setup and their overall package was quicker. He made a few mistakes on his lap and he was still quicker. So fair play. But I hope you enjoyed the comparison video anyway and give it a thumbs up if you did. Leave the comments on what you thought of both laps down below. But as always, it's been a pleasure making a video. Really enjoyed making this one. And I'll see you all on the next one.